That's your decision now, don't I? This is the Black Rifle Coffee Podcast. Prepare to get caffeinated. Yes, uh, this Black is the- Rifle Coffee. This is the Black Rifle Coffee Podcast. Welcome yeah. to the Black Rifle Coffee Podcast. This is the core four. Uh, myself is uh, who am I? Evan. Yeah, maybe. We've got uh, Logan next to me, Matt, oh. and Jared. I think uh, I, if 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 what? we're coming out strong <laughs> with the Black <laughs> Rifle Coffee Podcast, why we got to tell them who you are. You're you're Evan. The CEO of Black Rifle Coffee. I mean, I think most people know uh, who we are at this point. I mean, we've made a lot of podcasts over the years. No, and no one's seen a single one, apparently. We've seen a single one, apparently. <laughs> um, yeah, this is the podcast where we talk core four, meaning uh, kind of the four founders minus Richard. Um, well, to be fair... It's always minus Richard, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's off doing something fun. Oh, he's busy. He's working on good stuff. Yeah, he's I, always busy. He does have a way to build really cool shit. Yeah. yeah, he's one of those guys where you just kind of like wait around forever, and then he, he just has like a huge cum shot of content, right? Where it's <laughs> yeah, just it's, you're it. just you've been waiting for it for a year, and then like when we saw the pitch deck of what we're he's putting together specifically. It gets yeah. It gets your your blood racing. It's fun. Well, yeah. this might this might be a good since I have all of you here. This might be a good time for know. me to ask a very important question, and that is, can I have three and a half million dollars in twenty twenty three because I have something I want to build in twenty twenty three? Yeah. Yes. He, I already know what he wants to build. You want to build a uh, C-130 coffee An shop. A C-130 coffee shop. I want to take the <laughs> yeah. coffee truck to the next level. <laughs> and I want to build an, an actual flying A C-130 coffee shop that we take to every air show. As long as we can put 155 <laughs> canisters in it, that yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, you, cool you, that you we can get the shoot the right Evan Hafer shot is a coffee out of a hundred uh, 105 millimeter uh shell. <laughs> yeah, the only way I'm cool with that is if we can actually shoot out of the the cannons like coffee cans. It's really could, dangerous, I, but can you imagine us like helping fight wars with that thing and we're just fucking launching our CD <laughs> cans through terrorist spaces? I mean, just showing up with your own, you know, graphics wrapped AC-130, that's a pretty it's a pretty baller move. And you think about it like Sponsoring an F1 team is about three, three and a half million dollars. So it's like, do you want an Indy car or do you want a fucking AC 130 coffee shop? Yeah. Well, and the cool thing is, is that even though we're talking about it, nobody else will do it uh, because they, they don't have the stones and they have no ability to actually do it. So we're the only people that could actually have a, an I mean, AC 130 I- gunship coffee shop and we could wrap it with the gunship. Logos, but we have to like change it so it's AC one thirty. Can the AC one thirty do zero gravity? Because then we could do zero gravity coffee shops, so you can oh, go yeah. with a friend and like share an espresso in the air and then float while you drink it. Just yeah, saying, so- might as well expand I just mean, it. This also provides jobs for up to eight people that retire from C one AC one thirty positions. You know, <laughs> they can laterally transfer from an active duty Air Force AC-130 crew to a Black Rifle Coffee AC-130 crew. Very cost effective. Yeah, it's a good skill bridge program. Why (laughs) why 2022? Why can't we just do it? Could you imagine the jealousy in that squadron like where a dude's leaving to retire AC-130? He's like, ah, I got the skill bridge with Black Rifle Coffee's (laughs) AC-130. Yeah, there's our LinkedIn commercial that we need to make. (laughs) Are you an AC-130 gunship pilot? (laughs) Do you want to fly the skies in the greatest coffee (laughs) ship ever? It's called a coffee ship, not a coffee plane. I don't know why. A coffee ship. Uh, Logan and I are drinking teamwork. So uh, nice teamwork is a uh, pretty amazing. Bag. I think this is uh, one of my favorite logos we've ever done. But I see that yeah. all the ECSs, uh, they're kind of like my children. You know, I, I kind of say that about all of them. I'm like, oh, this is my favorite one, and then the next one comes out. I'm like, 
That's my favorite one. And then you don't let any, yeah, you only let a limited number of people buy it until you feel bad, like, like you were a bad dad. And then you're like, all right, everyone can buy it. Well, yeah. So that's a good, this is a good thing to open up with and explain is the exclusive coffee subscription. They're all uh, what we call micro lot coffees that we basically, we go out to a lot of different countries throughout the year. They send us samples or we either go them, especially before COVID hit. Um, But in a non-COVID time, we would go to these countries, we source the coffees from the farmers, and then we roast them, sample them, and we curate these incredible coffees for once a month, which is the exclusive coffee subscription. And then everything you see here between the coffee and the bag, it's typically designed um, by yours truly. Uh, I like to design this. It's kind of my my thing. Uh, and then the art department downstairs between what we call the nerds, the guys uh, downstairs here in Salt Lake, uh, they're fun and they all have little uh, dick fours in them. So you actually have to look for the little hidden knickknacks and paddywhacks in the bags. There's a dick in oh. the bag. They're not dick fours. It's a uh, it's a term that I've used to to reference the like a little <laughs> Easter eggs. It's, it's, it's an Easter egg, but yeah, yeah. Okay. I, I call them dick fours. Okay, okay. What's dick fours. We're, What's we're dick inventing fours? words today. Well, you're we're not, not like if people haven't seen it We're not, we're not, we're not, yet. We're not inventing, inventing words. I'm just telling you what I call it. But that's cool. Okay. The, uh, the uh, new ECS box packaging is one of my favorites because I love the designs that we've done over like last year or so. And now all of them put on that box to include the wrap on that the, the trailer. That, that's just fucking cool. It reminds me of like almost the 90s skateboard era, which is super fun. I'm really proud of this thing. This thing yeah. looks great. Yeah, it does. Great. And so everybody gets this, which is uh, the Black Rifle Coffee podcast is not just a commercial. It's a place where you can get information about what's going on with Black Rifle. What are we doing? What are, what are we doing as far as like what's coming up in content? What are we doing in product? Uh, what's going on in our lives? You know, like, yeah. like what kind of uh, love life do the, we have? The update. Of, hey, why did you look at me? Hey, do you guys do you want me to make you guys feel old? Sure. So, sure. Uh, one of our guys that used to work for us when we were out in Salt Lake, uh, Andrew, hit us up, and he has finished his army enlistment and would like to come back to the company. That's oh my god, do you feel old? Like the dude finished four years. And he's you're you're back. just you're just scratching the surface. Go read the comments on my latest Instagram post. We've got guys that watched our videos in high school, enlisted, and now have commissioned and have been promoted to 03. (laughs) Dude, no, if you like put that into context, Jared, when we started making YouTube videos essentially 10 years ago when when this whole thing started, that's 10 fucking years. So someone that was 10 years old watching our videos is like halfway through an enlistment in the army. It's it's a mind... All these stories... All these stories are sitting on my Instagram right now as from, from my post yesterday. Oh, I know from Charms. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Charms is a perfect example how he was like, what? He was in JRTC when we met him. Right? No, he was he was ROTC. He was a junior in college. ROTC, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. excuse me. Crazy. Yeah, that guy. And then he just graduated range school, right? Yeah, yeah. honor graduate too. Honor graduate. Ah, yeah. so sick. Well, yeah, and that's he was a thing, really dude. good kid, man. He was our yeah. intern. He was a really good kid, and he had drive, and he was always like, "What? How do you do this?" And he, he got it done, man. Congratulations oh, yeah. to him. Yeah, that's rad. That's that's awesome. So cool. We should we should have sent somebody out there to to, to the tabbing ceremony. I tab. know we did. I mean, he didn't tell anybody until after. It was like the second he gra- It was that, like he was like, yeah. "Hey, look, I did it." <laughs> no, that that makes sense because you're like, I don't know, man. I'm like, I'm like get bounced out of here. <laughs> you're not going to tell anybody <laughs> until it's graduation time. Yeah. <laughs> true. yeah you're, that does make- yeah. That's kind of like telling somebody it's your birthday in the military. Like, well, <laughs> well that was honored. like when your family wanted to come out for any selection process. That was the same thing, right? It's like, you don't really tell them until like the weekend, like, or like a couple days before. Cause you're like, I could get fucking peered out, you know, four days before graduation. You don't know. Yeah, you don't know. Yeah. Uh, Black Rifle Coffee has a new chief operating officer. We do. Yeah. 
Uh, and we're very excited. We are we are very excited, very excited. Uh, she is a former army pilot. Uh, West Point Point sixty-four graduate. Apache. Yeah, West Point graduate. Uh, which we don't hold that against her, you know. No. Except everybody here at Black Rifle Coffee for who they are, even West Point graduates. You know, right. look at us. That's brave. And, uh, You're going to catch a lot of heat on hey, the internet, Evan. Hey, I know. We might catch some heat on that one. We're very we're, accepting. We went woke. Like, you can just say that. We went woke because we, we hired a West Point, Point officer. <laughs> yes, hired a West Point officer. Uh-oh. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're excited, man. She uh, she comes she comes to us with a lot of experience. She's super cool so far. She's been here in Salt Lake for the last couple of days. Uh, we're really excited because... Uh, obviously because it's always great to have another military veteran and somebody that's super motivated. So, yeah, if you get a chance, her name is Toby. If you stop into one of the facilities, you should ask. Say hi. Ask for Toby. Mm-hmm. Uh, no helicopter free rides quite yet. Well, we're going to try to work on that. You don't have the Black Rifle Apache quite yet. We don't yet. have the Black Rifle Apache. Apparently, Jared wants the AC-130, but maybe the Apache happens, or the rocket pods or RTD I mean, launchers. I'm just saying my... Three and a half million was a high point. Like I found a good AC-130 for around one million, and then we just need the coffee build out in there, add a couple guns, and we need the crew, and we're good to go. I mean, I think it's a sound investment. Yeah, I don't. Why do we got to wait for 2023 to do this? I, I, if you're telling me it's in the 22 budget, then let me know now. It's in the 22 budget. No, it's not. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it's not. Yeah, but, but okay, we, we, let's just entertain the idea. Hey, what's comedy. this line on the Amex that says C-130? Oh, I thought it's C-130. <laughs> yeah. It's not a real C-130, right? That's some weird, like, you know, supply chain yeah. nomenclature. No, no, it's a, it's a C-130. I mean, if that is what we flew to all the countries to go tour coffee stuff in, we show up in the Black Rifle C-130. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we can just set the. It's a company perk, right? So you can yeah. you can come and and go for rides, just like we're we're setting up all sorts of internal company perks that you're going to be able to put in for like a little draw system, yeah. And that can be one of those things, just uh, a couple of days with Jared in the C130, yeah. And then it's worth it with Jared, yeah. Just me. It's just me and you in the AC130. Jared, Jared's just flying the AC130, and it's like somebody gets there. It's like, how many hours do you have in this thing? Like four. So lucky you, or we're gonna we're gonna fire this thing up. We're gonna go. We're gonna really we're gonna get we're gonna get a few more today. This is a little off topic, but the AC one thirty reminded me since we always flew them in Ranger Battalion. I'm not sure how much you guys flew them. Did you guys ever do the Ambient game, which was very dangerous? And I and I and I suggest very much <laughs> against it. Did you no, guys ever do that? I've heard of no. the Ambient game. I have not. Oh played. man! So like when we would fly out from battalion, we'd go to an Air Force base. You know, we get on like a C seventeen, usually not a C one thirty, but we'd fly, and it was like you'd take two Ambient, and then you'd sit in a circle and see who would the last person awake was the winner. I don't know how why that's the winner or the classification of the winner, but you would. How start do you to like, prove that's this the winner? If you, I don't know, but it was gnarly, <laughs> dude. You would just be like hallucinating, like, and your body would keep telling you, like, "Oh, you're just bored. Just lay your head down, dude." Just and then, dude, it was it was a wild game, but we played it almost every single time going into the country. Hmm. And then you'd so, sleep for like 15 hours, and it was perfect. So, did back- you hallucinate at all? Sorry, did you get like see any weird visions or anything? Yeah, there? I have on Ambien. Yeah. It, yeah, I mean, it was like more of like a, a dream state per se. So yeah. you, you're like, you're awake, but you're functioning as if you're in a dream. It's, yeah, it's not good. I suggest against it. But when you're young and dumb, you do things. Well, while we're on the topic of flying, we need to to say a farewell to one of our peeps, um, Preston Wallace, who was oh, yeah. on the podcast a while ago, is is departing from the company. Mm-hmm. He uh, He's going to keep flying. He got a good contract gig. He's going to be... Bro, he, not just a good contract gig. He got the best diamond of the fucking rough contract gig. Like, nobody gets that. He got it. It's impressive. Yeah. It's impressive how much he's going to be making. I, I couldn't... Uh, it's not even that. It's what he's going to be doing. Yeah. Nobody gets to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, Preston, if you're listening to this, thanks for all the hard work. He was uh he was the F eighteen pilot. We did a podcast about his time in the service a while ago. That was towards the beginning of it. But appreciate all the hard work, buddy. I on that note, NASA is looking for people that are willing to do a a one year uh, simulated Mars mission. Really? really? Yeah. Ooh. Can yeah, like they 
this, to go do that? Well, they build, they build like the pressurized little, little Mars base. And then they want you to go live there with a, for a year. How many people are going? Where are I have you? no idea. We need to look into Is that one of those like greenhouse things where they build it? They tried yeah. that. Didn't they try that in like the 90s? And it was it's like Holly hundreds Shore of millions. Yeah, hundreds of yep. millions of dollars as a Bio-dump. colossal failure. Yeah, but this one, this one is like they're actually like pressurizing this this habitat and you have to sustain certain, you know, you've got to live there for a year. I mean, you, sure? sh- you should have introduced us to your the newest Black Rifle family member, Geisha, over there, you know? Yeah, that is uh, Dictator Geisha. So, here, hold on, let me grab her. She's crazy. She's cute. This, this dog is intense. Um, she also has uh, one of the best reflexes with the... Do the yeah. do the stomach scratches. Watch this. Watch. Watch this. this is great. I gotta get... And the podcast is on YouTube if you guys are listening. Yeah, just in case you (laughs) are on audio in your car and you're like, I can't see any of this. There's a dog. It's a German short hair. Uh, It's a wire hair. Wire hair, yeah. It's a wire hair. Okay. Yep. Or uh, (laughs) Carl with the vagina, as we like to call her. (laughs) Vagina Carl. (laughs) Vagina Carl. Carl VC. It's a VC. VRC dog. R.I.P. Carl. Yeah. R.I.P. Carl and Bremi are up there playing in Black Rifle Doggy Heaven, you know? Yeah. And Bella. Oh, God, I don't and want to Bella. Shit, yeah, sorry. Ah, thank you. So, Dictator Geisha, that's her name. That's after uh, a limited time coffee that we did last year. Yeah, last year. So, it's a uh, Gesha. So, the funny thing is, and here's the backstory between uh, the Geisha that we did, or Gesha, was everybody in the coffee industry, it was kind of a troll to everybody in the coffee industry. Because they're very particular about calling it Gesha because it's from Ethiopia. It's actually the strain of coffee that started coffee, believe it or not, like in Ethiopia. That's what the the origin myth is. Um, and this, it, the the everybody calls it Gesha. People confuse it. So in the coffee industry, the 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 rubes confuse it as Geisha. That's what. Yeah. That all the sophisticated people think. So what I did was I was like, well, let's just own it, you know. So we made this really cool piece of art with a Panamanian dictator uniform because it's a it's a Panamanian coffee with a uh, geisha head, right, and then a rising sun in the background. Japanese, so, yeah. yeah, Japanese rising sun. Which yeah. was it's a very confusing Panamanian. image. <laughs> it's a very <laughs> confusing yeah. image. Not very historically so correct. It, there's nothing historical about it. It's so wrong that it's right. Because what I imagine was that there are some fairly sophisticated coffee people that saw that and they're like, these guys are idiots. Like they're the they're just idiots. So that was but, a I, but I think that's that what's coffee so, was amazing. So fun about ECS is it doesn't really make sense because you come we come up with these like designs that literally mean nothing but are hilarious and then it's some of the world's greatest coffee that you can source and then you pair just like a ridiculously good coffee and a ridiculously cool design and you get whatever yeah. the fuck ECS is and it's a little creative outlet and it's wonderful. Well, and let's let's add that to the let's add the dictator geisha image to this for the people in YouTube. So we'll 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 give it to you guys. That'll be nice. When are we gonna yeah. come back out with that one? Uh well, we're we're still finishing the packaging because the packaging on it is gonna be really interesting. Oh, we're gonna switch it up a little bit. So yeah, gonna we're back. gonna do a can. We're gonna do a can. Okay. Yeah. Ooh, I okay. like that. We're gonna do a can. Um speaking of that, is it is it too early to say something you think about future of stuff? No, I don't think so. I mean, we're coming out. Who's with- yeah? Who's who? Whose rules are you breaking? They're your I'm own nothing. rules. I was. It was a question to the core four if we wanted to maybe announce some shit. All right, I want to announce all this stuff. Yeah. Well, yeah. Might as well. We're we're really right. That's cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. We're we're. Uh, how long have we been talking about this? Probably since the inception of the company. Uh, what what are we talking about? Um, you got to catch me up. The new the new cold brew. Yes. Oh yeah. yeah the, so. I mean, we've been wanting to do this for... I mean, I've been wanting to do this specifically for probably five years, but we just haven't been able to because... Uh, it's cold difficult. Brew is very, cold brew is difficult. It's actually easier to make a uh, cold brew ready to drink with milk because it's pasteurized 
And then you can get it canned. There's a lot of different canning options out there for that. Uh, but just standard cold brew can be a little bit more difficult. And uh, we we had to kind of take the easy one first before we tackle the more difficult product. So we're coming out with a cold brew, non-sugar, non-cream, 200 milligrams. Two, yeah, unsweetened, 200 milligrams of caffeine. So that's Ooh. a hit hit. No, I, am, I, I am so so excited because like if you look at our RTDs, they're ready to drink. You know they they have relatively very low sugar compared to like in the category and competitors. And I think that they're best in class, hands down. I'm obviously biased, but if you do like a flavor analysis or anything, it's just better. But the cold brew without anything in it, I'm going to fucking live off of those. I'm going to have a whole oh, yeah. refrigerator stocked with like 150 of those. It's it tastes phenomenal. The packaging's cool. I, I cannot wait for that. And I think that's an option that a lot of people in like the fitness arena and other stuff um, have been asking for. And when people see the packaging, it's going to be cool because it's going to be very easy to throw that in a backpack and take it on hikes and, and up and on a mountain or on a fishing trip or a hunting trip. Like it's so versatile as a product. I can't wait. This is the most excited I've been for something, a new product release in a very long time. Yeah, same here. I'm just like because I don't I don't do a lot of the cans because I'm not into the sugar situation as most mm -hmm. of us are. Yeah, I'm freaking 41 days into carnivore right now. Oh, 40 Dude. days. Yeah. I carnivore. I have way, huh? so I have a very weird thing to to tell you guys. Uh, we're not med. We're not. We're not medical professionals. I, I'm. I I'm considering right going thing. vegan. No. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Looking at the looking at the alka like the alkaline the whole alkaline diet thing like that is fascinating. You should try it. Why? I mean, why wouldn't you try it? Who cares? Why not? You only live once. Yeah. Like, yeah. The other thing you is, you don't like, eat vegetables at all. Yeah, but yeah. I just told you. I just discovered this whole alkaline thing yesterday. Yeah. Man, when you That's watch one yucky. YouTube video, you should change your entire life around that. Just so you know, like yeah, yeah. or if yes. you read a meme. You should definitely make huge decisions and life changes based on, I would say, meme news. Yeah. Meme news. I, that's what I do. Yeah. All right, fine. You want to do this? Let's go. How many days are you going to do it for? Commit to it right now. Oh, shit. Logan's yeah. sending it. I, I don't know. I said I didn't fucking roll in here. Like, oh, you want to bring this it up? Let's do it. Let's go. Let's see you. Because that's kind of a thing with you is sometimes you're like, oh, you get these crazy ideas and you got to follow through with them. So, okay. So, I'm doing 60 days of carnivore. You do 60 days of Veganism. Okay. Never okay. Yeah. I'll do it. I got to, I got to, you got to give me about a week because I got to do some research. I don't know what I can, can and can't eat. <laughs> Jared's like, I, I actually don't know what vegan means. What is vegan? Um, wait, wait, wait. I don't, I can't eat fucking meat or bologna I mean, or spam. No, none of that. No, no, no. Literally, I've got, I've got the list right here and it's, it's super like, like you're, it's yeah. like vegetables pretty much. Yeah, you're <laughs> vegan. What the fuck, dude? Yeah, olives, <laughs> fruits, pretty much. Some nuts, maybe some some raisins. Fuck. Dude, it's <laughs> oh, rice. It says it's, I can have wild it's, rice. It's a. It is a. Oh I mean, I, God, I, I, dude, no. not, I I agree 110. percent You should try it. You should absolutely try it. Like, if you can do 30 days on this, I will like. I don't know if you can do 30 days and and be firmly committed. You can't. You cannot break it. I won't break we, it. We have to do like do something for him. No, I will. Jared, I will pick up my old vegan. bet because at the beginning of this year, I said if Jared went sober for it was like three or four months at the time that I would do uh, a, a, a documentary. feature documentary on Jared. Uh, and of course, he didn't follow through with it. Um, so I'll reinstitute that bet. If you go 60 days vegan. Documentary done and done. Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. I I get two weeks for 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 educational purposes to yeah. understand what I can and can't do, and then we start. Yeah, y yuck. You, you realize yuck. you realize that like our camera guy that we took to Guatemala was, was uh Mike, Matt. vegan, vegan. What? I, 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 that's what Carmichael, I call right? Carmichael, right? Michael, right? But I call him vegan. I can't even remember his first name. <laughs> Because I just call him vegan. God, that was a nightmare like, trying to keep that kid fed. I know. Like that, that's man. the thing. That was, that's my only trepidation. I was having this conversation oh. last night is the only reason why I, I don't want to do it is it's a pain in the ass for everybody else when you have to eat. No, it's not. 
It's not a pain in the ass. Because I don't give a shit if you eat or not. I'm <laughs> Yeah, you're literally going to have to meal prep with factor. celery and fucking carrots in a Ziploc bag while your friends are eating like a 12-ounce elk filet. But you uh, do you. I am, will not be on this journey with you. Ah, oh, but God, it's I, only for I, I'm willing to try almost everything in life at some point, but vegan, I can like say with utter the utmost confidence is I will never, ever try to go well, vegan. Well, I, I, I don't say that because the whole reason I stumbled onto it was the fact that people are able to cure themselves of a lot of crazy shit that you can't cure by switching their body fucking makeup to alkaline, like completely. Like the health thing out of this was, hey, they're getting rid of of something that would take weird medications for four years. They're doing it in, thir- in in sixty days. But I think I think that's the same with any elimination diet. I think what what have you have you ever taken a really um, comprehensive blood test that breaks down every allergy that you have. No. Okay, number one is you got to do that. Okay. So you have to actually go and get your blood work done. And then you have to get all your food allergies completely done. Uh, and it's not only... So it's a prick test on the outside of your body and then your blood test on the that's obviously measuring the inside of your body. Then you have to look at your immunization results because your immune system has also got some things going on in it, whether or not you're activating it on different things. And when, I, when I'm saying this in, in general terms, I'm not trying to sound really, really idiot, idiotic, which I always do. But uh, you have to look at both of those panels, your exterior allergies and your, inter- and your interior, which is your blood work. Uh, and then you can decide because if you're allergic to Soy. celery yeah. and you start shoving fucking celery you know, up your butt again, that's not going to be good. Those are cucumbers, well, not celery. But. Here, here could be a fun game that that doesn't involve. What if, what if we put a call out right now to anybody that's actually a psychiatrist, and we all get a psychological review, and then we have to do a show on that. Oh, that's a good idea. <laughs> sure, I'll do that. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a vlog. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't. I don't even believe in it. Like it, it's, it's like it's like going to the fucking witch doctor. Like, oh my God, you can tell the future. Like, dude, you're talking about some dude in Germany that invented it to a couple hundred years ago that was some kind of sexual deviant that's like everything's back to like, that's why I like to breastfeed for my mother at 40 years old. And it's like, dude, you're just a fucking weirdo. Is that <laughs> Freud? Yeah, yeah, it's Freud. Flash. Like, oh, it's all cool. It's, you know, I can't do a German accent, <laughs> but it's like, it's all. Goes back to some weird sexual reference, man. Like that's that was all Freud. So it's like your German, German accent sounded like a Italian mobster I, there for a second. I have I a really good like a Russian accent, and that's all I got. That's all I got. Yeah. But yeah. I don't even believe in it. But sure, I can I can go. It was I was I was really hardcore ranting about therapy yesterday uh, <laughs> because again, like. You're paying somebody how much for them to just sit there while you regurgitate what's in your head? That sounds stupid. Well, what or how much therapy actually comes from just somebody just listening to you? Yeah, that's what I mean. Like it's just listening. Just oh, and then, yeah, but and then I think oh. some people don't have the opportunity to have a like a bouncing board of information that's unbiased that can like help them rationalize through emotional thoughts, and that's where a key section of therapy does help people because not a lot of people have a resource of like a support system that's educated and they can give them unbiased rational information back to help them sort their life and i think that's why therapy for a lot of people is helpful but no i think i think there's definitely a a um a positive result from a lot of people using therapy and therapists but i also think there's some quackery related to it as well i think yeah I think you really have to find a good therapist that you can you can work with and that kind of sees the the world from your perspective because I've also seen a lot of people where they start well, especially a lot of vets they start talking about things that they have no fucking clue what they're talking about and that's why I'm like a little bit negative towards it because they're passing judgment in some circumstances based on your life experience and then they're starting to shape your mind into uh, what I would say that we'll, we'll even call it more progressive views of how soldiering and being a warrior is versus 
like, dude, yeah, we understand that you went through some really hard shit, but so have like literally generations of men prior to you. And they've been like, we've been clubbing each other to death since fucking humans could pick up a rock. So it's not unnatural. It's just, you can't make fucking guys feel bad about it. Like you yeah. can't do it. And I think there's been a lot of guys that I've talked to. I know there's been a lot of guys that I've talked to who are like, man, I just, you know, I'm really struggling with this. I'm like, how? This is a natural progression of literally being a warrior, even in modern times, is no different than it was fucking 2,000 years ago. It's just a lot faster. Kayla, did you know with Black Rifle Coffee's Coffee Club subscription, you can get fresh coffee shipped to you every month? What? You don't even have to go to the store. Whoa. You don't even have to leave your bed. What? Wow. How did you get in here? You might want to go ahead and join the Black Rifle Coffee Club subscription before one of these guys shows up at your place. And it's yeah, but have we ever have we ever unpacked the fact that like if you look at like 150 years ago a warrior in the nat in the Native American standpoint, like, is celebrated. Like, when you, if you led, you know, if you were awarded a, a fucking uh, headdress if you met the three requirements of being a war chief. Like, and instead, nowadays, like now in 2021, you come home and they're like, hey, we need you to stop being so crass, you know, after you just hacked up 30 people and, and we need you to be professional and back here. Like, like... You see the difference? We used to respect these. We used to respect and label the fucking warriors. Well, yeah. I think we should go back to giving people warriors helmets after a couple trips overseas. I think that that's a rad idea, personally. Yeah, fucking war chief headdress. Yes, I'm in. Like, I think that's great. Yeah, <clears throat> you have to take the enemy's weapon, lead a, a hunting party or a war party, and then uh, like steal the enemy's horse or uh, come face to face with the enemy and not kill him. Yeah, it's it, like counting. What is it? Counting coup, right? <clears throat> anyway, yeah. Well, know. that's why, like, Jared and I are on the psychedelic kick right now, and um, and we have been for a little bit. But <clears throat> that's what I really like about it, as opposed to going and talking to somebody who has no idea where you're coming from, and, and you got to like not only, uh, you know, recap, uh, you know, potentially years of, of combat experience, but <clears throat> they 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 haven't done it themselves. Um, and this this psychedelic train it forces you uh, through these chemicals to reactivate everything that's in your brain, and then you essentially have to be your own self therapist. Like you have to work through all these things. You have to. Well, you're blow yeah, you're blowing out all the things that were suppressed. Yeah, and you're forced to deal with them in extreme ways. <clears throat> and I think that we're gonna see some trends here as yeah. time evolves to where that's the primary mm -hmm. focus for therapy, if you want to call it that, or healing, if you want to call it that, or just getting better, mm -hmm. um, which we all need to do on a regular basis. But I, I think, I think um, as the years roll by, it's going to be, uh, it's going to pick up in popularity quite a bit. Well, and, I, and there's a lot of places that you can work directly with a therapist and uh, with combination of therapy and psychedelics. So like, that's, yeah. that's the other thing. It's, a, it's not, it's not illegal. You can go and get prescribed therapy based on on multiple sessions with this. And tip, typically what that'll do is it'll activate different portions of your brain. So you have to work through the... the, the and I, I don't know, obviously, the neuroscience behind it. But if you're activating those sections of your brain, you're, you've got to blow those open and then work through the issue. And you can work through with a guided therapy session. Um, but I, I think that the cool thing with this stuff is you can't be content. Like we can always improve, we can always evolve, we can always continue to get better as far as like whether it's your psychology or your physical performance or both. I mean, look at Jared. I mean, three months ago he was obese. Um, you know, right? He didn't have any color to his skin. Yeah, he did. He was translucent. He looked like a um, like a clear blimp. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he looked like a bag of mayonnaise. Yeah. <laughs> That big Puff clear bag of mayonnaise. Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, these things, I, for people that aren't really, like, 
like up to speed on it. Like if you treat them like a party drug, then yeah, they're a party drug. But if you respect them and treat them like something that can, that can help that. Mm -hmm. And you, and you use them the correct way with guidance from these neuroscientists, neurodoctors, people, people that are doing these studies that they've been doing for over 30 years. Like you definitely will see the difference. Well, and and it's not new. Psychologists have been using this form of therapy. Uh, sometimes it goes back to like the 1930s. And depending on what uh, therapist you're using and how much research has been done, initially LSD was was something that they were developing specifically for psychotherapy. That was what it was for. The problem is then it was pulled out of that. Then it was manipulated by um, the CIA well, by the CIA in order to try to get intelligence out of the yeah. Soviets, which I'm not against, by the way. Like fuck those Soviet. Well, they just shit. used it on people without their knowledge. Like oh. that, super fucked. Like, could you imagine getting like Matt? If I just dosed you with acid and you had no idea, whenever you're like, yeah, oh my god, god. Yeah. guys, you know, <laughs> that'd, be, well, that'd be real great not to spike my morning coffee with acid because I don't do hallucinogenics. Well, so this is a great story. I, I got to tell okay. you. Okay, so the CIA used to have a, uh, they used to run, and I mean, they had these all around the United States. So um, when we look at uh, MK Ultra and the, the whole like series of things that they were doing with LSD and psychotherapy is fucking incredible. The stuff that 99% of it has been shredded, by the way. So 99% of all this program got fucking yeah. Men Who Stare at Goats is the movie about it. So, they had a whorehouse in San Francisco. So they ran a whorehouse in San Francisco where they were taking prostitutes and pulling Johns in off the street, but were dosing them. <laughs> and, they were, and they were filming all of this to see how they can manipulate people in order to get information out of them. Like, that's the level in which the CIA was going. And that's just like scratching the surface on this stuff yeah, to get information well, from the Soviets. I was thinking about this the other day. Like, if you had to go back in time to like the the 14th century, and you could bring one object, what would you bring? Oh shit! Hmm. And I, I I was like, I'd bring a DMT pen because <laughs> if I if I started fucking up the kings on that and telling them I was God, they would believe it. <laughs> I don't know. I think somebody said it I, I, on some podcast, but like, I think world leaders should like have to take DMT. I, I think like that was a, a it was, global that was regulation. Rogan. Was that was it? Rogan. Yeah. It was it was Rogan. He was talking about it. He was talking about how yeah. it would change the perspective of every world leader if they took DMT. Um yeah, I, I, I mean who knows? I, I have never done it so I can't really say there's only one know. way to find out. Um, Dude, and that uh like 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 look at like Kanye Kanye West like is actually a lot smarter than everybody gives him credit for. <laughs> I, I mean, not every like not everyone. If you just listen to the guy, I, obviously he's intelligent. Like he yeah. loves people and wants to fucking destroy the machine that has taken over. Like, like, but he goes so deep. Like even to the to the science behind the frequencies of his music, he he engineers his music to be at the the happiest frequency range that you possibly can be in to make you feel good. Well, have you ever heard that, that theory about the pyramids? That mm -hmm. they're actually like giant tuning forks. So if you look, there's a couple of YouTube videos on it, but if you look at those inside uh, chambers, they're actually tiered and layered like an instrument. And they think that they used to have people in there, like giant choirs that used to sing and put out like mass amounts of vibrations to make people feel good in the surrounding areas. Mm. Super interesting theory. Also, that uh, that documentary Wormwood about yeah. the CIA dosing. Is that a documentary? With... Yeah, I'm pretty uh, sure. Yeah. Okay, because it all went uh, a little bit astray after um, one of the guys they were dosing like fell out of a window. He jumped or yeah. got pushed. I don't know. Yeah, one of those. Things. Hey, when you have commitment to defeat the Soviets, you're gonna you're all gonna be enemies necessary. You're yeah. you're gonna build some. Some whorehouses and dose some Johns. You know? <laughs> Can you imagine being right onto that compartmentalized project where they're like, "All right, you ready for your briefing?" You're like, "All right, what's it gonna be?" I'm jumping into like 
the USSR. They're like, no, 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 you're running a whorehouse yeah. and then you're going to give people psychedelics and see if you can retrieve information from them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, Are there any rules? No. Yeah. No, there's no rules. You can do whatever you want. Like, <laughs> Can I sample the merchandise? <laughs> Dude, it, I, I, was, I read this, uh, the book, The Brothers, about the Dulles Brothers a few months ago. Uh, it was kind of like part audio and then I bought it because I, I like, there's only so much you can do with audio. So I was like going back and forth between reading and, and listening to it. It was fucking fascinating. When, when you look at what those guys were doing like post-World War II and how much authority they had, how much authority the CIA had. They had like zero rules. They answered to nobody. That's why you had all these weird fucking programs that were like, I don't know, let's put a couple million bucks to work over here with a bunch of fucking weird ass scientists and see what happens. Like, we got to all all weird ass scientists that we just stole from the Germans that are used to just doing weird shit. Yeah. Yeah. uh, Yeah. I think that's part of it. I think when you have no rules and you get a bunch of smart guys that are semi sociopathic with a fuck ton of money and they have an enemy to go after, man, you, you, you tend to do some really fucking weird shit. But I think you have to put it into context because everybody's like very judgmental towards, towards that, that section of history. Whereas I'm not because it's when you think about the Soviets and you think about, uh, their style and whether either style of, of communism, any style is fucking bad, but the Soviet style of communism, what they're exporting overseas was fucking insanity. So you guys have like, like to put ourselves into those positions, we'd say, this is a zero sum game. We have to defeat this ideology or we're screwed. They got to, they got to like pull out all the stops. That's the crazy thing about today because I think about it. I'm like, dude, we got to kind of pull out all the stops. The Chinese are like working on us like all the fucking time. And I I don't know if we still got like that 1950s get this shit done type mentality when it comes to this. Yeah, because it's like we're we're making commercials about, you know, you know, woke ass commercials about joining the military instead of going like, hey, the Chinese want to stuff us like a turkey by 2054. We kind of got to get our shit together and think more strategically. But who am I? I'm just a fucking simple coffee roaster that likes water. You hey, know? Did who you guys? I? Do you guys like this shirt? It's. Uh, I love that shirt. Oh, that is sick! It's like Cracker it's Barrel. Cracker right? Barrel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that. With instructor Earl sitting next to a roaster. Oh. I had Hunt work this up on the DTG as soon as we got it going this morning. Um, oh, yeah. I think it's beautiful. I think it's beautiful. Yeah, it looks nice. I like it. Nice. I'm we, a fan. We make a... Well, that's a really cool segue because we have a directed garment printer where we make all this fucking weird... All these weird designs. We make all this stuff in-house. Like the the People always ask me, they're like, oh, wh- who do you guys use for your art? I'm like, we do it all inside. We do it everything, anything you see. This is all like in house, excluding like a couple contractors here and there, but it's all in house. So the guys down there, uh, our art department, they come up with some fucking great shit. Most of the time, that's with a collaborative circumstance where we're kind of wheeling this stuff around, going, yeah, this looks cool. Let's fucking try that. <laughs> like, this makes no sense, but it doesn't have to. It, it, it doesn't does have to. Me. to. It makes it makes, I think it makes a sense. lot of sense. It's two epic animals, essentially a Sasquatch and a great white shark that came together right. under the very principle of teamwork to fight against adversity. You can just leave it really blank. You well, know? That's, yeah. I, I want to turn on this thing where we start doing posters. And then I want to, like, you remember all those weird motivational posters yeah. that used to happen? Yeah. Schools yeah. Schools or, like, as a kid, it's like perseverance. And it's like a guy running on a track with a fucking sunset yeah. in the background. And you're like, who looks at that and, like, makes different life choices, choices after saying that? Like, nobody. 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 But if this, if this was on the wall with, like, a nice quote, about yeah. how to how to combine forces yeah. to further actually yeah we need motivational yeah. posters out of some of this art yes that's what I'm saying like we just need to do a whole series of motivational posters yeah 
Yeah, we, motivation. I mean, that one right there just says teamwork, and then under it says always makes the dream work. And there you go. There's one motivational poster. Yep. It doesn't really have to inspire anything. It's just, you know, it's just like a Pinterest comment. Like, you know, everybody quotes them. They don't live them, though. Like, yeah, and then we then we have then we have the Blackbeard artwork, and it says, "Don't let anyone stop you from living your dreams." Yeah, <laughs> take, take yeah, what you dreams. want. <laughs> yeah, yeah, take what you want. Like other people's property is a suggestion. <laughs> 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 There's a lot of good Blackbeard posters. <laughs> uh, yeah, we could like we could roll that out pretty good. That would be that would be pretty epic. Blackbeard delight. Blackbeard delight is uh, one of those things that we can kind of roll out a series of really cool, really cool sayings like. You know, protect your booty stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Muff Diver is. Yes. An all-time favorite. Oh, oh my god, god, we've got so much good shit coming. Oh my gosh, we do, man. Like that's the thing with this company is we always have like crazy shit going on. Uh, yeah, what else is going on, man? Oh, you guys, Matt, what are you going to do? Yeah, when today? Oh, uh, I'm going to swing down to the Black Rifle Coffee Bernie Coffee Shop. Uh, Matt Carricker, aka. Um, Demolition Ranch is having a gun buy off. Apparently, I guess it's what, like what is a gun buy off? So what? I think he he posted it on YouTube to all of his you know followers that him donut operator and I think Eli's down there. It's them three and they're they stock the whole entire gun shop full of firearms because like you know they're hard to come by these days a little bit, but he got it all stocked out and they're having a sell off. So whoever out of the three can sell the most wins. And I don't know what that means really, but I'm going to go down there and see if I can just get at cost guns to hopefully have donut operator win. Why do you want donut to win? Uh, I don't know. You know, you can't have Eli win and then character's character and he has his whole follower base coming down to see him. So I feel like that's an unfair advantage. I, in I, his feel, like, way. I feel like you could have won that. I feel yeah, like yeah. you get the invite to that because it's well, you know, exactly exactly I did, but I had a podcast and I didn't want you guys bitching at me. So I just, you know, I'm here and then I'm going to run down right after. Ah. Plus, I don't really want to sell the guns. I want to buy them. So if anything, I would have just been a seller myself, bought like 30 and then left and won, which I could still probably do. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So it's our fault. I'm it God, is. you fucking insecure bitches. It I was just true. making a joke. I I do. Where did we? Where did you guys get that wooden thing behind you? I want one of those. That's a chainsaw piece of art from Abby what? Casey. Abby Casey. Yeah, I, I, dude. I need to. I need to fucking hit her up. I want that. Yeah, she's. I'll uh, have her do a few more. Is she here in Salt Lake? Uh, she's up in Idaho. I oh think. yeah. I'm a. He's pretty. I'm good. heading to Vegas. Uh, to sit down with our favorite twins. Oh, Hodge type. Hodge. The old Kevin and Keith Hodge. Those I love guys. those guys. Welcome They're to the so show. Funny. It's going to be a good show. It's a good show. <laughs> They're great. Uh, well, then we have... So we have a coffee shop opening here in late. So yes. we're opening one here in Utah this month, which is... This month is August. So I don't know when we're going to release this. But uh, we'll have a grand opening of our first Utah coffee shop outside of where the roaster is here in Salt Lake City. So I'm it's amazing. Pretty stoked. I wish we could have got got found a piece of property here in Salt Lake. Uh, but I get it. Like it's closer to the Air Force Base. And uh and that was the one that was available. So we got another one going down in Provo. We're opening one, another one with uh Neil Casey from Ready Gunner. So we've got one going in down there. Buff cookie. Yeah, sorry, Buff Cookie Casey. So we've got another coffee shop going there. Uh, I am currently looking in both Bozeman, Montana, and uh, Boise, Idaho. So I've got a couple different, couple different locations. Got I've got a uh, eye on. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I've got a, an, Annapolis, uh, Maryland, Mooresville, North Carolina, and uh, St. Petersburg, Florida. Yeah. That's right, because uh, uh, your buddy, what's his name, is opening one. Charlie, Charlie Pastrana. Oh no, oh. Charlie Kiba. Yeah, in uh, that's in uh, Niceville, Florida. Okay, Niceville. Yeah. Yep. That that, that, that be, build's happening right now, right? 
Yeah, that should be that there. grand opening should be hopefully in October. Yeah, we've got lots of coffee shops that are being opened or are on the schedule to be opened over the next year. So we're excited. Like I'm super excited for this year. One, I love going to these coffee shops. Two, it gives us an excuse to go to those coffee shops. And what I'm trying to do is set this up so we can go on jump trips to these locations, especially when we go to Florida. Mm -hmm. Matt and Jared and Logan finally had their balls drop a couple Ooh, weeks ago. What the fuck? Spicy. And... Spicy. <laughs> wow. Oh, ooh, spicy. Uh, Jared's been talking about this for like four years. Yes, like, I know. Do it. I'm going to do it. We, we were like, going to go get our free fall in El Paso. It's just, it's been such a time suck to get it done. But now that we're working that wind tunnel and getting good, I mean, that A license is going to be a fucking breeze. Oh, yeah. Dude, I was talking to Dan Kampernick, our our uh, coffee shop guy last night and I was like, okay, so I just want to build like the one-stop shop that I want to go to. So I want to put like an iFly station next to a skeet shooting place next to a coffee shop and then like, I don't know, maybe one more thing in a there. Gym, a gym, like, a tattoo yeah. shop. Yeah. Can, can we do this? No, we have to do that. Actually, we'll, we'll, I'm we'll, in on an iFly. If, we if we're Texas. doing an iFly, I'm in. We talked about this since we moved to Texas. It's like the the mancation where you can yes. go and put like you get a dope ass beard and haircut trim. You get a, maybe a fresh tat. You fly in the iFly Center. You know, like you got to have that. There's nothing like that for dudes like There's that want to like throw some fucking axes and you know shoot some skeet and do like real stuff like instead of staring at a blue light on your computer or your freaking phone all day. We have to set this up. I don't even look at my phone anymore. I'm in it. No, just never. No, I don't even look at it anymore. Never, not anymore. Why, look why at not? Mine. Why? Why do I not look at it? No, I said, why not? Yeah. I mean, I, we, we have to open one of these things. Like, yes, I'm that, in. Like that, we have to do it. And you know where we do it? We could put it at my airfield. I think, I think, I think San Antonio is like the perfect place. Yes, of course it is. And we already have Will. He could tattoo out of there if he's up for it, you know? Well, iFly's already in San Antonio. Though. Yeah, but that's okay. If there's two, that means ours will be less crowded. Yeah. Yeah, and we can just use it. We're not doing this for profit. Are we just building something that we want yes, to Yes, that's no. okay. <laughs> Just like this coffee company. Yes. Oh, yeah. I, I wanted to clear some things up on this too, which I think is really important, which is... We just do whatever the fuck we want to do. <laughs> <laughs> just, just so everybody's clear. Just so everybody's clear. That's what we like to do. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's a that fair is assessment. it. Yeah. You know, we like making cool shit. I love making cool shit. I think our designs are rad. I think our coffee's incredible. I agree. Of course I'm biased. Of course I'm biased. Like, I love the fact like when I come home and I see my coffee subscription because I have like four of them from our own company. But when I see the boxes on my front porch, I still get excited. And I've, I'm the guy that like started this in my fucking garage. And I still get like stoked when I see the coffee boxes that are like, oh man, this is my coffee. Oh the my God. The cardboard that has your logo on it and take tape that has your logo. It's cool. It's cool. I still get excited about it. I know. Like, my, I get fired up. My, I really, I really like this. That's good too. That's good too. Yes, the Coffee or Die magazine is what he's holding up for people on audio only. I didn't I'm know so, it went to print. I'm, yeah. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do an article in the next one. Who is Caleb Francis? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh, it's 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 a tell all. <laughs> we we forgot. So uh, Automatics Anonymous, like, tell us the backstory behind that. Like, tell us like who came up with it. Like, tell us about the filming, the whole night. Oh. Sure. Yeah. Automatics Anonymous has been kind of like a, a skit idea that, that has bounced around for a while through the group. And we were going to write it in, I think the Logan and I and Jared discussed putting it in like how to be tactical too, because the joke was always, you know, it's just like tacticalized operator thing that um, you, you go to AA for. And so, yeah, we had the idea. We went down to San Antonio. And if you guys didn't see it, it's on Black Rifle Coffee's YouTube, my Instagram, Black Rifle's Instagram. You can find it pretty easily. It was just a fun little skit. We're trying to get more of those, like a higher frequency, I think. Um, something from the content side, you know, we focus on like big, big production. But we realize sometimes it's just fun to get more smaller, funny ideas out. Especially when you get a group of guys like Caleb and Donut 
and Batty and all the guys that came down to support the BRCC internal team to do a piece of content. It's just fun to get. It, it's just hard not to like it. So mm. and we got plenty more of that come. We have some ludicrous shit coming down the the, the pipe right now. I, we we can't wait. Gonna see, check on. Oh yeah, that thing's doing good. <clears throat> Harvest great coffee is like halfway done already on our side of the edit. So I'm really excited to share that with you guys. Yeah, which uh, Jared posted the teaser video for yeah. that one on his yeah. Instagram. <laughs> okay. Here, let's, a little... let's talk about that because okay. we, we won't give too much away. But that, well, that whole... was another good creative brainstorm right. too because this... you and I came up with a concept at the ranch that was like this tee up to, I don't want to give too much away. But it's to, like, fine. It's fine to, to give mur- it away. Like, to, to hunt... Okay, fine. So we murdered a, a can of coffee, like a yeah. giant deer can of, an RT deer. Mm-hmm. Um, RT deer. And we were kind ready of to uh, ready to deer. teeing up like more of a serious formal type of uh, little hook. And then yeah. Jared's like, no, it needs to be cavemen. Yeah. Spears. <laughs> That's better. Yeah. Cause we were going to be like bow hunting at first. And then once you said cavemen, we're like, oh God. Okay. <laughs> but I think it's a good point. I just, what you, said. you know what I saw in my head when we were in that meeting is I just saw us violently hitting this thing while coffee is just spraying all over us. So that's what made me, that's what made me laugh at that meeting is I was, I was like, this is fucking funny. But, but that's when you were Evan saying like we do what the fuck we want. That's what I love because the genesis of an idea like that just comes from the hilarity that we find in the context of the writing. And then there's really no product description, brand description associated with us hunting in caveman costumes, a fucking deer can or whatever you want to call this thing. Right. It makes no RG- sense. RG- and then we just make it into commercial. And we're like, let's put this out to the world. And that's what I love being a part of this thing is because it's just, it doesn't have to make sense. We're like any other company be like, well, you didn't talk about the nutritional facts and then the, the, the positive attributes of the high protein and the MCT. Like, no, we just we stabbed a deer to death with spears and I ate mud. Like, let's go. That makes more sense to me though. Yeah, makes- me too. Well, that's why we do it. Because... Everybody else tunes out of commercials. They're stupid. They're they're stupid. They're really dumb. They're so well, they don't dumb. offer anything to the, the customer or the person watching it. Like it maybe from like an educational perspective of like this is a product, but like they don't give anything. Like I think that's why content and commercial should give something at the very least, even if the consumer or customer is not purchasing that product because of that, they should feel like they, they, they didn't waste two minutes of their life. And I feel that that's the difference of how we try to do things. It's like, here's something, even if you don't buy the product, at least when the end of the two minutes, you're like, that shit was crazy and I enjoyed it. Yeah. It, the whole point is to elicit an emotional response, whether that's laughter crying, being motivated, uh, wanting to blow your brains out because the fucking commercial is so boring and talking about bullshit nobody cares about does not count. Hi, I'm Ed Stevens. Do you have gold in your portfolio? <laughs> you should. You should. Are have- you worried about yeah. osteoporosis? Yeah. Do you need stronger calcium diet? <laughs> I'm Wilford Brimley, and I have diabetes. Like, no. I have diabetes. Yeah. I guess we watch a lot of Fox News because we just we literally just we just went it's right just right through all of Fox and diabetes commercials. <laughs> Do you have gold in your portfolio? Hi, I'm Edward Stevens. Is your goat have herpes? Well, <laughs> now check out Rabiva. It's for your goat in its butthole. I want to do a whole new series how we did this commercial doesn't exist, but Black Rifle Coffee does. I, I think I love those when we did hydration mayonnaise. Um, was it Dr. Schnitzel's whatever it was? Telegrams or whatever? Schnitzelgrams. Schnitzelgrams. Have quiet chlamydia of the penis. Like, I, I, I just love it. It's, well, <laughs> you remember what the precipice is that last one was, right? Man child. No, it was when Matt shaved his wonderful mustache and then yeah. all poof. Yeah. Like we got to optimize that span. Yeah, yeah. No, I I just ran a full page ad, a full page ad in Bernie magazine for a fragrance for men called Manchild. Yeah, which <laughs> it is amazing, by the way. Like <laughs> what he's doing with this, the Bernie magazine is probably one of the funniest things he's ever done. Like shit, that you doing. bought a whole year, right? Of, yeah, I've, I have a, a whole year. page. Yeah, we're on the cover this month, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's him and Caleb. It's fucking amazing. 
Like it's, it's hilarious. <laughs> and it just says, it says, go to the Black Rifle Coffee Bernie, see Mason, ask about getting on the waiting list. Mm -hmm. Like, this is just me fucking with Mason. Yeah. <laughs> Mason runs our franchise in Bernie for context. So it's hilarious that people are going to walk in and be like, hey, Mason, what's this man child fragrance? I want to get on the waiting list. And he's like, what? what are you, damn it, Jared. <laughs> we're the only coffee shop that we like. I think we're the only coffee shop that puts coffee shops in gun stores, by the way. Like, yeah, that's true. Stores and coffee. Shops. Yeah. So, you know, we have one here with the Ready Gunner guys and uh, Provo. Then we got one down in Bernie. We'll have it we're getting another one too, which I think is hilarious because you know we need to start fucking with Neil and and uh, Cookie too. Yeah, we do. Yeah. We do. We got to start fucking with them because billboards. When they would love it, Neil would be like, "Yeah, I've been thinking about billboards though for hit it, hit a live llama with an RPG just down at Ready Gunner." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Right. Machine gun rentals and RPG llamas only available at Ready Gunner. Rocketallama.com. Rocketallama.com. Yeah. We we can I just love that. It's just like it's like a llama exploding and a guy <laughs> like with his family and the kids cheering with a fucking RPG <laughs> on his shoulder. And it's like family fun. Yeah. RPG llama.com. <laughs> I love that. I think I think we should absolutely go to work on those. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get on that today. I'm giving Seth a call immediately. <laughs> All right. Oh, well. well. We hey, are... Seth, hey, Seth is designing that Tesla wrap, so make sure his priorities are mm -hmm. straight. We have something very special for you guys with Tesla. Yeah. Let's yeah. not, not give anything away than that. Elon. That's something That's special for Elon. Elon. Yeah. So we, when we release that, get ready. Because that shit's going to fucking Ooh. destroy the internet. Get ready. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So uh, thank you so much for tuning in to Amazing. Coffee's podcast. Bye. Bye. That concludes today's training. Any questions? Woo!